The rotator cuff consists of four small muscles and tendons that envelop the ball and socket of the shoulder joint. When torn, they can be a source of pain and dysfunction. The subscapularis is one of the four rotator cuff muscles and tendons. It resides in the front or anterior part of the shoulder. The subscapularis can be one of the more difficult rotator cuff tears to fix with a minimally invasive approach or an arthroscopic approach. This video depicts arthroscopic subscapularis repair. I prefer to do this procedure with the patient on their side or the lateral decubitus position. The arthroscope is in the back or posterior part of the shoulder and you can see two small plastic cannulas in the anterior front part of the shoulder. Those are the working portals. I have a shaving instrument in there right now and we can look at and work from there. This is the long head biceps tendon. It is dislocated out of its position which is common with subscapularis tears and we're going to release this biceps tendon with this electrocautery device and reattach it elsewhere in the shoulder and that's called a tenodesis. That'll be the part of another video or the subject of another video. Now we assess the subscapularis tear. We're looking around to the front part of the shoulder and the grasper has the subscapularis tendon and it's pulling it up into its appropriate position on the head of the humerus, the lesser tuberosity. That's where it inserts. The shaver instrument is utilized to gently remove any tissue off of the bone where the rotator cuff or subscapularis belongs so that we can have a nice healthy healing environment. This is a suture punch which, is, which creates a pilot hole for our suture anchor. Our suture anchor is the method that we use very commonly to attach soft tissue to the bone in the shoulder. This is the screw-in bioabsorbable suture anchor device. It has two very strong sutures attached to it that run through an eyelet. This is a very secure fit into the bone and then these sutures can be utilized to go through the subscapularis tendon and then tie them down to fix that to the bone. This is a suture lasso which is a suture passing device. You see that little wire loop through it and that's going to, going to allow us to shuttle suture. So we'll pass this wire and lasso through the subscapularis where it needs to go and where the suture needs to go. This grasper will retrieve the wire loop through one of the cannulas. Then through this six millimeter cannula, we'll pass one of the suture limbs, one of the blue ones, through this wire loop. And in the other portal or other cannula, the lasso resides and we'll pull that lasso and wire to shuttle the suture back through the subscapularis tendon. You can see this in the joint now, the black wire pulling the blue suture into one of the cannulas. We'll repeat this for the white suture with the black stripes. Here comes the wire loop that was passed through the lasso. We'll grasp this with the suture grasper. And now our aim will be to retrieve one of the white sutures and shuttle that through the subscapularis where it belongs to fix it to that first suture anchor. Now it's time to tie the knots. So here's the first knot. This is a special locking slip knot. Being that we're working through this six millimeter cannula, we have to be able to tie a knot on the outside of the shoulder and then deploy it. This is typical arthroscopic knot tying. There's the locking loop. We then utilize the knot pusher, which has a small hole in it, and this allows us to slide the knot down what we call the post limb, the post suture limb. And here's what it looks like in the joint. The knot is now advanced down to the subscapularis tendon, and the tendon is pulled up right to the suture anchor to fix it in its anatomical position and then we'll deploy the locking loop so that it's secure. To optimize security, we back up the sliding knot with what we call alternating half hitches. And that's what you see being pushed down through the cannula with the knot pusher at this point. This is a little suture cutter that leaves small tails. It's then time to tie the blue sutures, the same arthroscopic slip knot is utilized, 
can see the locking loop. It's deployed and that fixes it securely. We'll back that up with the half hitches and then cut the suture in. Cut the sutures to leave a small tail. We'll then assess the upper portion of the subscapularis. That still needs to be fixed. These large subscapularis tears typically need two suture anchors. So we will just repeat what we have already done. The suture anchor has already been placed. The two suture limbs have already been passed with the wire loop passing device, and we're tying the blue sutures at this point to secure the upper portion of the subscapularis. Once again, just repeating the same steps as had been done for the initial portion. And then here is the knot tying for the white sutures with the black stripes to finish the repair. And then you can see the completed repair. The subscapularis has been securely reattached in an anatomical fashion with two suture anchors with a minimally invasive arthroscopic approach. There's the tendon. It's reattached to its bony bed to allow a nice, healthy healing environment.